Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi, welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to begin Chapter 9, and this involves looking at more complicated bifurcation scenarios associated with bifurcation of equilibria of autonomous vector fields. We're going to begin by looking at the Hopf bifurcation. And this is a situation where an equilibrium point becomes non-hyperbolic, and in the process, as the parameter is varied, periodic solutions or time-dependent solutions are created. And we're going to develop this by looking at a specific concrete example where we can do all the computations explicitly. So, equation 9-1, a vector field on the plane, x dot and y dot. There's a lot of constants in this problem, a and b. These are just real numbers. They can take on any sign at the moment, and we're going to be mindful of what signs they have and the impact that has on the dynamics. And omega, which is a non-zero constant, we'll explain why we need it to be non-zero, and mu is going to be our usual bifurcation parameter. So it should be clear that x equal y equals zero, the origin, is an equilibrium point. And if we linearize about it, that's the first step, check its stability, we get this for the Jacobian. Okay, so the eigenvalues of this are easy to compute, mu plus or minus i omega. And so we see that for mu equals zero, the origin is non-hyperbolic. And with eigenvalues plus or minus i omega, it's a center. And there's a reason we want omega to be non-zero, but um, just accept that for the moment. Okay, so we see that for mu less than zero, just looking at the eigenvalues, the origin is a sink. For mu greater than zero, it's a source. And for mu equals zero, it's a center. Now we're going to study this problem, this vector field, by passing to polar coordinates. Why? Well, I don't have a good easy reason for that right now, but whenever I see quantities like x squared plus y squared, I think of polar coordinates. Often that can be useful. So we differentiate with respect to time, x dot, y dot, and that's what we get on the right-hand side. And we substitute into the uh, vector field above, the value, the polar coordinate representation for x and y, and in order to get r dot by itself, and theta dot by itself, to get r dot, we multiply the first equation by cosine theta, the second equation by sine theta, and add. And we can isolate to get r dot. And then to get r theta dot by itself, we multiply the first equation by minus sine theta, the second one by cosine theta, and add. And we can get r theta dot by itself. So dividing through by r, we end up with this equation instead of the more complicated looking equation. We still see the constants a, b, mu, and omega. Okay, now the r dot component of this vector field doesn't depend upon theta. The theta dot component does depend upon r. That's okay. But the r dot component looks exactly like the pitchfork bifurcation problem we looked at, except keep in mind we're dealing with polar coordinates. So r is greater than or equal to zero. r negative has no meaning in these coordinates. All right. So we can then look for the equilibria of r. That's r equals zero. And r equals, normally when we take a square root, we have a plus or minus. But r, we only taking plus positive, it's square root of minus mu over a. So that puts some constraints on mu and a, because the quantity under the square root, it must be greater than or equal to zero. We call this quantity r plus, 
only depends upon our constants. Well, A is a constant, mu is a bifurcation parameter. Okay. So if we plug the value of R plus into the equations, this is what we get. R plus is an equilibrium value for the R component. And theta, we can solve that easily. It just varies linearly in time. Now, it's very important that we understand what we have in this problem. R doesn't change in time. It's given by a particular value. But theta is an angular variable. It increases linearly in time, assuming this quantity here is non-zero, but we'll, we'll worry about special cases like that later on. So uh, the value, a value of r, which, satisfy, which is an equilibrium point of, r, of the r-dot equation, not zero, corresponds to a periodic orbit. r is fixed in radius, so r doesn't change. If we start on it, we just spin around with constant angular rate. And that's the definition of a periodic orbit in the plane. So what we've found is periodic orbits depending upon the parameters. Now, we want to examine this situation much more closely. And we'll do that in the next lecture. So bye for now.